Hello friends, welcome to Astro Crescent. My name is Bhavan Bharadwaj. In my previous video, I did unboxing and initial review of the Skywatcher Evo Guide 50 ED guide scope. Although this is a guide scope which has 50 mm aperture and 242 mm focal length, it can easily be converted into a telescope which can do wide field astrophotography for deep sky objects. In today's video, I will demonstrate how this guide scope can be used to build a small portable wide field astrophotography telescope. And the material that I will use will be ZWO ASI 533MC Pro camera, Starizona Evo FF50 field flattener, ZWO ASI this way. ZWO ASI Air Mini, a low cost SV Boni 30mm F4 guide scope. All of this will go on Skywatcher AZ GTI mount, which I have converted to EQ mode using this latitude base. So let's do it together. So this video will be divided into several parts. First, I will talk about setting the proper back focus using the Starizona Evo FF50 field flattener and the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro camera. I will also show how to use a filter drawer, ZWO filter drawer, so that we can easily change filters. In the second part, I will demonstrate how the SV Boni guide scope and ASI Air Mini can be mounted on top of this. Either both on top or one on top and the other one on side. In the third part, we will mount the whole setup on AZ GTI mount. In the fourth part, we will talk about power supply, the other connections to ASI Air Mini and connect the AZ GTI mount to ASI Air using an EQ mod cable. And finally, when everything is done, we will do the balancing of the scope on the mount, which is an important part. This video has been divided into several chapters. You can skip to any chapter at any point of time. In the first part of video, we will set up the back focus, proper back focus for Evo Guide 50 ED. So let me put this aside for now. We'll use that later. We'll use it here and let me put it here. In case uh, you want to use a planetary camera, uh, you, you will keep this 50 millimeter extension tube as is. Open that. Open the dust cover. The filter. For example, I have this L Pro filter here. The filter can simply be inserted into the nose piece and it will go right here. And then you can set the focus from here and lock it when it is focused. The focus knob is here. Lock it from here. Lock the focus from here. But because this scope has only 50 millimeter aperture and 242 millimeter focal length. This probably is not suited for planetary imaging. So we will remove that for now. What we need is a deep sky camera like the ASI 533MC Pro or any other uh, cooled camera you might have. Let's see how this can be attached to the guide scope. So we will need to remove this extension tube Lock the focus. It has threads over here. So hold it from here and unthread it, unscrew it. Keep that aside. We will use Evo FF Staridona Evo FF 50 field flattener. Skywatcher also has a field flattener for this guide scope. This one here. 
but the problem is that uh, the Skywatcher field flattener has back focus of only 17.5 mm. That will not allow me to use a filter draw because this filter draw itself is 21 mm in thickness in width. The Starizona field flattener, it has got some good reviews. So in order to attach the Evo FF field flattener to the guide scope, simply insert the field flattener like this into the guide scope and tighten these three thumb screws. Now this field flattener needs a back focus of 55 millimeter. So now what we will do is use the ZWO spacers to achieve that focus. So this is a ZWO 16.5 millimeter spacer. But the problem is that the thread on the field flattener is M42 and the thread here is M48. So we will need an M48 to M42 adapter, which I have already attached to the field flattener. So this will be screwed on to the field flattener. Next, we will use the ZWO 21 millimeter spacer. Now this camera is already has 17.5 millimeter distance from the sensor, which is just on top of this black dot here up to this level. Now we can attach this directly on top of this. So when this is done, our backspacing of 55 millimeter is done. I'll show it like this. So as you can see, from here to here, the distance is 48.6 or 48.5. And we have 6.5 more from the top of the camera up to the sensor. So 48.5 plus 6.5 is 55 millimeters. So 6.5, once again, 6.5 inside the camera, 11 millimeter spacer here. 21 millimeter spacer here and 16.5 millimeter spacer here, the total would be 55 millimeters. In this process of setting the back focus, we forgot one thing, the filter. There are two options to attach filter now. The first option is to take out everything, including the field flattener. Take your filter and insert it here and put it back. We are done. This is not a good option because it is very difficult to change the filter. So what I need to do, what I want to do exactly is to use a ZWO filter drawer so that I can take out the filter drawer, change the filter and put it back here. So this has to go in this imaging train. So what we will do is remove the 21 millimeter spacer and instead of that use the filter drawer let's do that but the thread here is m48 and the thread here is m42 so i will need a, an m48 to m42 thread adapter here it is uh, when you attach this thread adapter, so make sure that this notch, I hope you can see the notch here, one here and one here. So the notch should remain outside so that it is easy to remove it using a tweezer like this. Now the filter drawer can be attached. The camera will not now go on top of the filter drawer. Now I can easily remove this filter drawer cassette and insert my filter here, which will then go on to 
take a look at from this side. So whenever I want to change the filter, I will simply take it out, replace the filter with another one and put it back. All right, so this completes the imaging train using the Skywatcher Evo Guide 50ED guide scope. This is my ASI 533MC Pro cooled camera. With this, I have 11 millimeter spacer, then 21 millimeter ZWO filter drawer, then one more 16.5 millimeter spacer. After that, I have the Starizona Evo FF50 field flattener. In this part of the video, uh, I will demonstrate how we can attach the SV Boni guide scope and ASI Air Mini to this imaging train. There are two options for this. Starizona has a cam shell for this, but uh, somehow I did not like it for my personal reasons. The second option is from Astro Kraken from France. AstroKraken.fr is their website. It looks like this. It's a nice uh, mounting bracket for Evo Guide 50. I did not uh, go for any of these options because I need to install, I need to attach two things my guide scope as well as my ASI Air Mini on top of this, or one on top, the other one on side. Both Starizona camshell and the AstroKraken mounting bracket, they will take only one of these things. Not more. Thanks to Don from Don Astronomy. He has a nice video explaining how we can use this type of DIN rail to attach a mounting bracket and then this mounting bracket will go on top of this and we can attach a guide scope on top of this. I will give the link to his video in the description. So what I have done is I purchased one foot long length of this type of DIN rail like this from Amazon, cut one four inch one four inch piece of that and attached a mounting bracket on this and I took another four and four eight inches of piece, bend it and attached another bracket on this. So what will happen is one of these will go here and the other one will go here. I can mount my guide scope here and I can attach my ASI Air Mini on this mounting bracket. So let's see how we can do it. So I need to remove these two screws. With this guide scope, I faced one problem that I cannot insert my guide scope. I will have to remove one of these screws Insert the guide scope, tighten it, and then put back this thumb screw. One good thing about these, these thumb screws is that there's a lock nut here. I can lock it properly here and make sure See, it's moving. So I'll have to adjust the position of these nuts. Tighten it and make sure it's not moving. And then tighten the lock nut so that the, this mounting rail does not move. Okay, here goes the guide camera, all done and I can set the focus by moving this part of the guide scope and when it is done, I will simply lock it in position. Next, I will attach this right over here. There are two, there are two threaded holes, so I will need two hex screws. I think they are M4, so before I attach it, it's better that I remove this part of the imaging train for safety reasons. I'll put it here for now, attach it and then attach that pack. Make sure it's not too tight. 
Now I can simply insert ASI Air Mini or ASI Air Plus or ASI Air Pro, whatever you have. The mounting bracket is same for ASI Air Mini, ASI Air Plus and ASI Air Pro. Now I can insert my camera and tighten the three thumb screws. So this is how the complete imaging train will look like. Now the imaging train is all set up. Let's mount it on my Skywatcher AZ GTI mount. I'm keeping it a little upwards so that I can balance it properly after all the cables and connections are done. This Skywatcher AZ GTI mount has already been upgraded to EQ mode by adding this latitude base and the firmware in the AZ GTI mount it has been updated. I have a video on upgrading the mount to EQ mode and updating the firmware or software in the Skywatcher AZ GTI mount. I'll give the link in the description below. So now that the imaging train has been mounted on this on the Skywatcher AZ GTI mount, the next part is to supply power and make various connections. So here I have a bunch of cables. The first part is to use a power source. For the purpose of this video, I am using a Celestone power tank, which has 73.3 watt hours capacity. There is a 12 volt output port, which is also used for charging this power tank. Power indicators for LED lights and a USB output port. So I'll use a one meter long power cable. And this will go directly to ASI Air. So let me move the mount to this side so you can see the connections. From here, we will use a small power cable, half meter power cable, which comes with ASI Air Mini. And that will go to my cooled color camera. I'll need one more half meter cable to supply power to the mount. So with ASI Air Mini, you get two half meter cables. We'll use both of them here. One of the two power outputs at the bottom of the ASI Air Mini so that it is closer. That goes to the mount. Next, we will use the EQ mod cable to connect one of the USB ports to the AZ GTI mount. So one side of the EQ mod cable is connected to one of the USB ports and the other one goes to the hand controller port of the mount. One cable goes from the ASI 120mm mini guide camera and the USB side to one of the other ports. Next, we will attach the main camera to ASI Air. So this is a USB 3 cable. The camera is USB 3. But ASI Air Mini has only USB 2 ports. That may affect the uh, data transfer speed, but it's not noticeable. So this is how all the cables are connected. So let's not forget the dew shield heater ring, heater strap. This is an SV Boni dew heater strap for guide scopes. And this is basically a guide scope. So this SV Boni dew heater strip needs 5 volts USB power and it has a built-in power regulator. So the voltage to the dew heater strip can be uh, set to low, middle or high depending on the weather conditions. So this will directly go into the USB port of the power source which is Celestron power tank. So once again the main power from the power tank goes to ASI Air Mini. From ASI Air Mini, power is supplied to the mount and power is supplied to the camera also. The SV Boni dew heater strip that takes its power from the USB port of the power tank. That completes the wiring. We can tidy up our wires the way we want. That's okay for now. I'll have a separate video on cable management. Once I turn on the power, everything is powered up. 
ASI Air Mini does not have a power on off switch. So as soon as the power is turned on from the power source or the power tank, everything is turned on. Now I will check whether the whole setup is balanced or not uh, in both RA axis and declination axis. It's back heavy, so I will have to move it a bit upwards. So this looks good now. And you can see it's all the way up. I would prefer to replace this smaller dovetail with a little longer one, maybe 250 millimeters. Uh, but for now, the balancing is perfect. No problem at all. Let's check the other axis. For the counterweight section, what I have done is I purchased a three feet long M12 threaded bar and then cut about a foot piece of that. This counterweight is actually an export scientific counterweight that I purchased separately. I, so I got actually two of them and uh, just in case, you know, this one is uh, 2.5 pounds and this one is 2.5 pounds. Just in case this uh, were to get heavier, I would use two of them. But for now, it seems that one counterweight is enough. That is my complete imaging train using the Skywatcher Evo Guide 50ED, SV Bonnie 30 mm mini guide scope, ASI Air Mini, ZWO 533MC Pro camera, and ZWO 120mm mini guide camera. With all cables and connections, the entire setup is connected to the Skywatcher AZ GTI mount, which is upgraded to EQ mode using the EQ mod cable. I do not need to use the SynScan app. I can simply operate everything using the ASI Air Mini and ASI Air app on my uh, from my iPad or from my phone. Now we will check whether this whole setup works or doesn't work with my ASI Air app without using the SynScan app, but using the EQ mod cable. Skywatcher is at GTI mount, switch it on. My ASI Air is already on and on my iPad, I will first connect to ASI Air Wi-Fi. It's already connected, very good. And I will launch the ASI Air app. Enter device. From this Wi-Fi symbol, I will check everything. Uh, ASI Air station mode is off, we don't need that. Main camera is ASI 533MC Pro. It is on, gain is 100. Main scope focal length 242 millimeter. That's correct. Cooling is on and cooling is set to, let's, say, let's set it to minus 10 degrees. Go to guide camera settings. It is showing me ASI 120mm mini, which is correct, it is on. Again, right now it is 68. I can set it later when I do the actual imaging. Guide scope focal length, SV Boni. It is 120 millimeters. Calibration steps and all, we'll touch that topic later. Mount, EQ mode mount. That means, my EQ mode cable is working. Go to home position, start. I'm just trying to move the mount. It's moving. So that's enough for now. The system is working. Other topics such as polar alignment and actual imaging, I'll uh, do that in some other video. So that's all for today. I hope this video was helpful. If I missed anything, please let me know in comments. If you have used the evo guide for astrophotography or wide field astrophotography let me know in comments that's all for today i'll see you next time until then clear skies